So the second section of chapter 16 is on the speed of sound. So the uh, first section introduced sound as a longitudinal back and forth wave as opposed to a transverse wave, an up and down wave. And so now we're going to talk about how we calculate the speed of sound. So you might remember from chapter 15, which dealt mostly with transverse waves, uh, that the, the velocity of a transverse wave is going to be the square root of the force that's trying to res restore the equilibrium uh, divided by the inertia that's resisting uh, the return to equilibrium. This is also true of sound waves and longitudinal waves as well. So let's say we're trying to figure out the speed of a sound in a fluid. Well, uh, what is analogous to the restoring force? For a fluid, the bulk modulus, which you might remember from chapter 11, tells us how difficult or how easy it is to compress a fluid, how difficult or easy it is basically to, to move it um, in terms of the restoring force. Then the density relates to the massiveness of a fluid and thus its resistance. Um, so we have analogies here between the restoring force, the bulk modulus, and the resisting force, the massiveness density. Um, and so, um, first of all, they start, Young and Friedman, this is cued to Young and Friedman's University of Physics, chapter 16. Um, first of all, uh, they, they suggest that maybe it would make sense that for sound, the velocity would be equal to the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density, rho. And of course, they go on to show that in fact, this is the case. So there are basically three formulas to learn uh, in this section. This is the first one, and it relates to the speed of sound in a fluid. Uh, interestingly enough, and I wouldn't have necessarily guessed this, uh, but sound actually moves faster in liquids and solids than it does in air. Uh, and so the speed of sound in a fluid, uh, for, say, take water, the speed of sound in water turns out to be around 1400 meters per second, um, whereas the speed of, of uh, uh, sound in air is only something like 340 um, meters per second. So it, it moves much faster uh, in a fluid like water uh, than it does. Uh, now, uh, there are some liquids that it doesn't, like liquid he helium, actually at only 211 meters per second in liquid helium. But in many fluids like water and mercury, uh, it's going to be much, much faster than uh, the, the speed sound moves uh, in air. Well, okay, what about the speed of sound in a solid? And here we're, we're talking about a solid that has some movability to it, like, say, a rod. Uh, same basic concept as, a, as in a fluid, but now we're going to talk about Young's modulus as opposed to the bulk uh, modulus. Uh, like I said, this does not apply to a bulk solid because a bulk solid has no room to give. And so basically we take that same basic formula and instead of B, we put in the Y for Young's modulus. So the velocity uh, of sound in a, in a, say, a solid rod that can, can move a little bit is going to be the square root of Young's mod modulus divided by uh, the density of the rod. So, uh, for example, this is even faster. Um, so a steel rod with this movability um, it's going to be close to 6,000 meters per second, the speed of sound. Uh, and then aluminum is, is over 6,000, about 6,400 uh, meters per second um, for an aluminum rod. Uh, very interesting. Okay, finally, what about in a gas, the speed of sound in a gas? Well, it turns out to be this, this monstrosity. And um, uh, they don't give the full kind of derivation. Um, I get the impression that we're dealing with matters... Um, that would require us to um, dip a little bit into chemistry and dip a little bit into the thermodynamics of the chapters that follow. Um, and so for now, again, I would just memorize this. What is gamma? Uh, gamma is something called the ratio of heat capacities. It's a constant, uh, something that we're, we're uh, uh, constant for a particular gas. Uh, but we're not going to find out about it until chapter 19. R is the gas constant you may know from chemistry, 4.314 joules per mole uh, Kelvin. Um, and then T stands for the absolute temperature in Kelvin, which basically means you add 273 to whatever the Celsius is. Um, and then lastly, M is the molar mass, that is the number of grams per mole uh, for whatever gas you're, you're talking about. As it turns out, um, so the speed of uh, the speed of sound in a gas uh, turns out not to de depend on the pressure. 
Um, you can see, if you remember from chemistry, PV equals NRT. You remember that formula of uh, how pressure and volume and temperature all relate to each other? Um, that's lurking, I think, in the background of this formula, but the P's have canceled out, uh, and the V's, I think, have canceled out. Anyway, um, so as it turns out, the speed of, um, uh, of sound in a gas does not depend on the pressure of the gas at all, but it is directly proportional, as you can see from the formula, to the square root of the temperature. So as the temperature goes up, uh, the speed uh, goes up. As it turns out, uh, in, in chapter 18, two chapters from now, we'll see that this formula is almost identical to, uh, to the speed of molecules um, in an ideal gas. And so I think for this formula, we're going to have to hold on um, and, and uh, maybe come back to it in a later chapter uh, because we're not quite equipped to fully understand it. Uh, and so we can, we can at least memorize it uh, for now. And this concludes the second section of chapter 16.